This lesson discusses how to find the area between a curve and the x-axis. Previously, we approximated this by summing over a number of rectangles that we drew under the curve and approximated what the area was, but it was not exact. The fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to find exactly the area between our function and the x-axis. And the way we do this is called a definite integral. The fundamental theorem of calculus states that the net area between a curve over the limits a and b is the integral from a to b, so it makes this definite instead of indefinite as we have limits now. And then we take the antiderivative of the function and evaluate it at the upper limit minus the lower limit. There is no need for a plus c when we do these antiderivatives because if we had a plus c, it would end up canceling out when we evaluated our function at the upper limit minus the lower limit because here I have a plus C and then I have a minus C. So let's use this. The antiderivative of x squared is one-third x cubed. The antiderivative of negative 2 is negative 2x and we're going to evaluate that going from 0 to 2. So when I plug in my upper limit, I get 1 third times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 minus, if I evaluate this at 0, we're just going to get 0. So this gives me 8 thirds minus 4, which is negative 4 thirds. Now, how is it possible for me to get a negative area? Well, this formula is calculating net area. So let's look at the graph. We're looking at what's going on between 0 and 2. Well, in between 0 and my x-intercept, my curve is below the x-axis. In between the x-intercept and 2, it's above the x-axis. When we calculate net area, we consider anything below the x-axis to have a negative contribution and anything above it to have a positive contribution. So we have more area below the x-axis in this problem than we do above it. Therefore, we get a negative net area as a result. Okay, let's try another problem. If I'm going to evaluate the antiderivative of the square root of x, I want to rewrite that so that I can see the power on it. So this will become 3 times, well x is going to become x to the 3 halves, which means I need a 2 thirds out front. And we're going to evaluate going from 1 to 4. Well, the 3 over 3 simplifies, so we're evaluating 2x to the 3 halves going from 1 to 4 and that gives us 16 minus 2 is 14. Okay, next problem. We need the antiderivative of secant squared. Now this should be an antiderivative that you recognize. The derivative of tangent is equal to secant squared. So we need to evaluate tangent at pi over 4 minus tangent at 0. Tangent of pi over 4, well that's sine over cosine is root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, so we just get 1. And tangent of 0 is 0, so the area under this curve is 1. All right, this problem's a little bit trickier. It's an absolute value function, and we don't know how to take the antiderivative of absolute value. 
So let's see, what does the graph of absolute value look like? Well, if we plug in an x equals 1 here, we're going to get 2 minus 1 is 1. If I plug in a 0, I'll get the absolute value of negative 1. Well, that'll become positive 1. And in between it, if I plug in a 1 half, I'll actually get 0. And our upper limit is 2, so we need to know what that is. We plug in a 2, we get 4 minus 1. Absolute value of 3 is 3. So what's happening here is I'm going to have to separate this integral into two parts so that I can find this area using this function, and I can find this area using this function. So absolute value of 2x minus 1 can actually be defined as a piecewise function where for x less than values of 1 half, we are getting negative values underneath inside the absolute value symbol, and so we take the negative of whatever's in there to make it positive. At values of x greater than or equal to 1 half, we're getting values inside the absolute values that are positive, so we just leave the function b. So I'm going to break my integral up into an integral from 0 to 1 half using the first part of the function, and I'm going to distribute this negative, and say I'm integrating over negative 2x plus 1, and then we're going to integrate from 1 half to 2 using the other part of our function. So the antiderivative of negative 2x is negative x squared. Antiderivative of 1 is x, and we're evaluating those from, sorry about that, 0 to 1 half plus the antiderivative of 2x is x squared, antiderivative of negative 1 is negative x, and evaluating that from 1 half to 2. This gives me A lot of fractions, a lot of numbers. When I simplify it all, I get 5 halves. Okay, what we just used in order to solve that definite integral was one of the properties of definite integrals. There are several properties, and they are pretty logical. The first one states that if I integrate with the same lower limit and upper limit, I'm going to get 0. Well, that makes sense because if we evaluate this, we're going to get f of a minus f of a, which is 0. Also, we're trying to integrate under a vertical line. There's no area under a vertical line. The second property states that if I reverse the order of my limits, I'll get exactly the opposite sign for the area. Well, that makes sense. The first one gives us f of b minus f of a, and the second one would give us f of a minus f of b, which is exactly the opposite sign of what we started with. The third property is the one that we just used, which says if you pick some value in between your limits, you can separate your integral into pieces and then add them together to get the total net area. Okay, one last problem for this lesson. Let's find the area between y equals 1 over x, the x-axis, and it's giving us limits from 1 to e. 
Well, E is approximately 2.7. So I'm going to say E is going to go about there. <clears throat> if I evaluate 1 over X at 1, I get 1. And then if I evaluate it at 1 third, I'd be down here at 1 third. I don't want to figure out what 1 over E is because that's a yucky number. So my curve is doing something like this. And we're evaluating from here to here and calculating that area. So my area is going to be the integral from 1 to E of 1 over X dx. Well, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of the absolute value of x evaluated from 1 to e. This gives us the natural log of e minus the natural log of 1. Well, natural log of e is 1 and natural log of 1 is 0, so our net area under this curve is 1.